Okay, hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first Travel Media Group educational webinar of 2019. My name is Ryan Embry, and I am the brand ambassador here at Travel Media Group. I want to first start off by thanking everyone for taking the time to join me on this presentation this afternoon, and I am super excited to share this information and content with you all. Now, at the end of this presentation webinar, I will be providing my direct contact information in case you had any follow-up questions with the content that I'm going to be sharing today. You can also use that chat feature, which is located in your toolbar, to type any sort of questions or feedback. I will be responding to those personally following the conclusion of the presentation. So, uh, also be sure, locate your toolbar since we have several interactive poll questions included in today's webinar. So, let's get our brushes ready and see how your hotel's reputation is painting a picture for travelers online. Now, the marketing goal of every hotelier is to get a traveler to start visualizing themselves at your hotel. That's not enough anymore for a hotelier to just paint a picture for the traveler. But you need to paint a picture more appealing than your competition. In the past, hoteliers would use enticing billboards with quality pictures of their rooms and amenities to paint that picture of what travelers could expect when visiting their property. Now, with the rise of the internet, the palette has completely changed and there are more opportunities than ever to paint your hotel's pictures for travelers online. So what tools and channels can you use to paint your hotel's picture? Well, the first is your hotel's webpage or website. This is your online billboard. If a traveler finds themselves at your web page, they are only a click away from a commission-free direct booking at your property. Therefore, we need to paint the best picture possible to ensure that booking. That means rich, quality content like high-definition photos, videos, inviting descriptions, and strong call to actions. Do not let outdated photos or lack of contact, not content impact conversion on your web page or website. But as we know, your web page is not the only place that your hotel is listed online. Online listings are other channels that are vital in making sure you are painting the best picture possible to your travelers. Too many times I've come across a hotel that has drawn a masterpiece on their brand website or web page with up-to-date content and incredible photos. But on their other listing sites, I'll see missing information or old and outdated pictures. Now you wouldn't buy a painting with only some of that picture being drawn. So why would you expect a traveler to book at a hotel with missing or old information? Next, one of the best ways to paint a picture for travelers are not even provided by the hoteliers themselves, but by other travelers, and that is reviews. Reviews can create the clearest picture for travelers when visualizing the type of experience to expect because they're able to view it through the eyes of a fellow traveler. Now, if travelers are looking for more personal reviews from their friends, followers, and people they trust, they turn to a different place to get a perspective on a business, and that is social media. Social media is another channel to paint your hotel's picture in the mind of a traveler. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, these are all visually driven forums where travelers are getting hundreds of impressions of your hotel and are also looking for possible referrals from their online personal network. However, it's not just about the content on your social media pages or how your or your hotel's reviews online, but also included that in 2019 is the way that you're responding and engaging with that content. In this day and age, it's not enough to just acknowledge and thank guests for their review. Travelers want to see thoughtful responses to guest feedback and solutions presented when issues arise. 
they want to see, they want the peace of mind knowing that if they were to encounter a problem at a hotel, a picture is painted of a caring, hospitable hotelier with inventive and quick solutions, not a blank stare, a dismissive shrug, and an empty apology from behind the front desk. So before we move on, as I mentioned before, uh, I want to launch a quick poll concerning the pictures that are being painted of your hotels that are on the line. So the question and poll that I have is what channels do you feel are the most difficult to paint a true impression of your hotel to travelers? I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll now. And you are... Uh, you can go ahead and select multiple channels if you'd like. So again, find that toolbar. And the question is, what channels do you feel are the most difficult to paint a true impression of your hoteliers, or I'm sorry, of your hotel to travelers online? And I'll give everyone just a couple more seconds to go ahead and find that toolbar and submit their answers. And again, you can choose multiple there. Okay, great, just a couple more seconds here and I'll go ahead and share this information so you can kind of see what your peers had written out. Awesome. So we're looking at uh, actually, um, around 30% for social media review responses and web page and online listings. And then about 40%, 41% of you think that reviews are the most difficult. So what we're gonna do today is actually a real life scenario. And I wanna thank everyone for their feedback. What we're gonna look at today is a real life scenario with the age old hotel nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill need a hotel to catch an event by the water. And in this story, we're gonna follow traveler Jack and Jill as they research the same fictional hotel and decide whether or not to book. Now, I want you to note, as they research the different pictures that are being painted in, in their heads and the impressions that they're getting for the exact same property. Now, like most travelers, Jack and Jill are gonna begin their research online at different review sites, one of the places that you said is the most difficult. So Jack finds the hotel on TripAdvisor. He sees that the property is rated four stars and is in the top 50 of its very competitive and larger market. At the top of the hotel's TripAdvisor page is a brand new five-star review, which reads, wonderful front desk experience. Brian, April, Alicia, and Archie were all outstanding. Talk about great customer service. Location was perfect, every amenity you could ask for. The room was super clean, bathroom awesome, towels fluffy, and the TV worked great. And the bed has one hell of a comfortable mattress. Sheet were, sheets were clean and the room was neat. Also, we felt safe, unlike a lot of places. Oh, and I forgot the continental breakfast was more than continental. It had all kinds of breakfast choices. My brother had the waffles. He said they were delicious. Thank you and kudos to the great staff. So already you can see with just one review, Jack's already starting to get an impression of what to expect at this hotel. So let's see where Jill ends up. She, she prefers to do her research on Google and she uses Google reviews to find this particular hotel. Now the same hotel, although rated four stars in top 50 in its TripAdvisor, is only rated a 3.3 on Google reviews. And near the top of this page, she notices a one-star review. And that review reads horrible. Reviews were mixed, so we gave it a chance. Carpet, multiple spills, and filthy. Dryer in the room full of dust. Holes in bathroom. Front and side door full of black marks. And the dresser was old. The leg was broken and had a piece of cloth attached to it. There were two of us and we only got two small hand towels and they were paper thin. The floor on stairways and rooms need paint. This place is disgusting and I'm shocked code enforcement hasn't shut it down. 
So let's take a look at the different impressions that each traveler got for the exact same hotel. Jill, finding the property on Google reviews, sees it more as a three-star property. He, she saw comments and getting the impression that it, the rooms were dirty, there was broken furniture, and there was no customer service support. Meanwhile, Jack, after reading that TripAdvisor reviews, he's seeing a four-star property. There's excellent customer service with multiple employees being called out by name. There was clean room and even mentioned safety within that review. So even after one uh, review each, we're already starting to, to see some pretty dramatic different pictures being drawn for each traveler. In fact, 80% of visitors read six to 12 reviews before making a decision on where to stay. So the good news for this hotel is that one terrible review might not end your chances immediately. But I would challenge you with this stat, go to your TripAdvisor page, go to Google, all of the review sites online, and objectively read all of the reviews on not just your, not just your first and second review, but on your first and second page. Write down those keywords that are being mentioned multiple times, both good and bad, and what picture do you see after reading those reviews? Ask yourself, are you booking at your property when reading those reviews? So let's continue, and, and Jack continues his research on social media, one of the channels we talked about earlier, and he finds himself on the official Facebook page of this property. Right off the bat, he sees a, a, a great looking high definition photo as its profile, so we know he's come to the right spot. There's over 2,400 followers on this page, and he feels super comfortable with a question that he had sending a message to this property um, with easy prompts and that welcoming layout at the top, asking for a direct booking or also to contact the property directly. There's lots of great recommendations and reviews for this property, as well as attractive, um, enticing, high-definition photos, which were added specifically by the hotel. Now, Jill looks on social media, too, and, and this happens sometimes for hotels. She searches on Facebook for the property, but instead lands on an unofficial Facebook page for the property. Now, the hotel doesn't know this exists, but this happens sometimes when social media accounts aren't monitored, and Facebook essentially will build a unofficial page for the property, and travelers can sometimes find themselves there. In fact, if you look at this unofficial page here, there's actually over 1,200 visits. Now, Jill's concerned if she's even found the right place since there are no pictures of the property within the profile. All of the photos that she's seeing within this Facebook page are actually produced by other guests, and they're not the most enticing of pictures. There's also a giant do not recommend review right at the top of this page and she doesn't feel comfortable messaging her questions that she might have about the hotel because the profile is labeled as an unofficial page at the top. So even social media is creating and painting those impressions of this hotel for both traveler Jack and Jill. Jill is uncomfortable to message over social media. She sees that do not recommend at the top of the page, and those guest photos are not the best representation of the property. And again, she's, it's actually an unofficial page of the property. Jack, on the other hand, is, has a, a very positive impression after, uh, after looking at that Facebook page. It's easy to communicate with a message me now button. There's positive reviews. There's tons of followers, engagement from the hotel, and they're super responsive. And the professional photos that the property has added look great. So the point of this is to show hoteliers tend to forget social media also plays a part in a hotel's reputation, and if not properly managed, it can paint just as strong of a picture or an impression as the review that we saw in the last example. In fact, 80% of travelers are more likely to book a trip based on a friend liking a page than they are from seeing traditional advertising. I want you to think about the power of that stat from a hotel marketing perspective. 
Take a minute after this presentation and visit your hotel's social media profiles. Does this look like a page that one of your friends would follow? If not, think about what you can do to make sure that it is so you can create a social media page which is representing the ultimate traveler referral page for your hotel. So let's move on. We, we saw a stat earlier that said about six, or that travelers look at about six to 12 reviews before making that booking decision. So Jack heads back over to TripAdvisor. He's gonna check out some more reviews before he makes that booking decision. And you know what? He comes across a one-star review, which is titled, Beware the Amenity Fee. And instead of focusing so much on the review, what Jack does is he wants to look at the review response and see how such a negative experience was handled by the property. Now, this property in particular has both the general manager as well as the front desk responding to reviews. They split duties at this property. The general manager is actually responding to this uh, one-star review, and it reads, the issues you raise are important to us. Please accept our apologies for any confusion about our fees. We believe you may be confusing our resort fee with the required deposit. The resort fee, which is indicated across all of our websites, is $16.33 per day. When booking through a third-party site, this fee is excluded from the quote you reserve. Now, the $75 fee that is charged during check-in is the deposit we require each guest to pay and is refundable upon checkout. Depending on your bank's policy, it may take five to seven business days to make those funds available in your account. We hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. Your, your, the, we hope the rest of your stay was enjoyable, and we'd appreciate the chance to host you again should you be back in the area. So Jack's feeling good about this response, and again, has an impression in his mind that if he were to get in a negative situation or experience, this property would be understanding and could resolve his issue, professionally and customer service, cu customer service oriented. Now, Jill does the same thing, and she comes across a one-star review, which is titled, We'll Never Stay Here Again. And this time, the front office manager is the one responding to reviews and has a little bit different of a tone. She responds, it's shameful how some people like yourself choose to handle a situation. For a guy who stays in over 50 hotels a year, as you claim, you clearly understand what a prepaid, non-refundable, discounted hotel rate represents. You call our staff rude only because you are unsuccessful and intimidating into refunding a prepaid guaranteed reservation. Sounds to me like they know all the policies and follow them correctly. Have a nice day. So as we move on again to the, paint, uh, the picture being painted in these travelers' minds, Jill sees that response, that spiteful, spiteful response, and she thinks poor customer service. It was handled very unprofessionally, and the property and, and management staff was not willing to help. She does not have the peace of mind knowing that if she were to encounter a problem, that it would be handled and resolved like she would, like she would want. Jack, on the complete opposite side, sees that great customer service written within that review response. Very understanding. There was an apology when necessary, but at the end of the day, it was very professional and hospitable. So as you can see, even a one-star negative review, if, if properly addressed and responded to, can paint a completely different picture to a traveler. In fact, 62% of guests saying, say that seeing responses to negative reviews make them more likely to book compared to hotels that don't respond. So you're actually doing yourself more harm and not responding to those negative reviews than good. Now, again, a challenge, compare your review responses to that of your competition. Ask yourself, are your emotions showing through those responses? Are you being objective and hospitable no matter what reviews read? And what perspective is a potential traveler seeing when they're, re when they're reading that review? So, we've come down to decision time. And after weighing all of the options and looking at the picture and impressions that they were getting through social media channels, reviews, and review responses, as you can guess, Jill decided to go with the local competition across the street, and Jack has an amazing experience at this hotel.
Now, it's our goal as Travel Media Group to help you attract both Jack and Jill. And no matter where travelers are looking, they're always painting a perfect picture of your property. And for an artist, painting that perfect picture includes right consistency, detail, and creativity. And the same can be said about a hotel you're painting a picture of their property for a traveler online. But if you are consistent in your reputation management, you're detailed in your online listings and web page, and creative with your social media post, posting and review response, I can assure you, you will end up with the masterpiece that you are striving for. So, Travel Media Group comes in as experts in helping hoteliers paint their, paint their picture and making sure that, uh, that you're painting your best picture to travelers. We have tools online that can help you see exactly what travelers are seeing and how you can uh, help with conversion rate. So before I wrap up and give you my details, I'll launch one more poll to see if there's anyone on the line that would like uh, a digital media specialist to show what type of pictures travelers are seeing when they research your ho hotel online. And I'll give everyone a couple more seconds. Again, this is a tool to show you how travelers are seeing you and how you can convert better. I won't go ahead and share this, but I'll give everyone just a couple more seconds to again, find their toolbar and answer. And if you did join a little bit late, uh, I will be sending out a copy of the entire presentation afterwards. Okay, we'll just wait a couple more seconds here. Okay, great. So as promised, here is my contact information. Uh, that is my direct line and email. Uh, we, I love talking to hoteliers about their properties. We know every single situation is different. So if you feel more comfortable reaching out to me directly, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna be continuing these, these educational webinars throughout 2019. Um, thank you for your time and we will talk to you soon. Thank you so much.